What? Do you want to go fishing? You want to go on the boat? You want to go on the boat? Well, too bad. We can't go on the boat, Tucker, because the wind is blowing 25 to 30 miles an hour, and it's not very fun. Yeah, it's brutal out here. I'm just like standing on my back patio. This is my house faces north south and the south southwest wind today is absolutely ripping. It's Thursday. My all my trash cans blew over recycling, blew over. That was super fun to clean up first thing this morning. But anyway, even though the wind's blowing and I can't necessarily get out on the lake today, I'm still gonna do a video for you guys. Let's go in here. It's a little too windy out there. But I did a little poll on the community tab of my YouTube channel to ask you guys, even though we couldn't fish today, what kind of video you guys wanted to see. And really as far as what gets views and what people tell me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever, uh, it's either gonna be a crappie baits and gear video or a wiper baits and gear video. And judging by these poll results right here, you guys wanna see the wiper baits and gear video. And honestly, I can't blame you. These are not the type of videos that I enjoy doing. They're not the type of videos that I enjoy editing. But on the days where number one, I'm not guiding, and number two, can't fish regardless because of the weather or whatnot, I'm still gonna try and put some content out for you guys. So without further ado, let's hop in the boat. Let's get started on my top three favorite wiper baits and techniques in all the gear that I use. All right guys, so we're here to talk about Wiper, AKA the hybrid striped bass and all of my favorite, well, I shouldn't say all of my favorite, we'll do my top three baits, gear and techniques for that specific style of fishing. Now, there's obviously a myriad of different ways that you guys can catch these fish. If you guys have followed my channel for a while, the last couple of years, you've seen that obviously I run a multi-species guide service, but for the majority of the year, my bread and butter is the wiper. Now, a lot of these same techniques that we're gonna talk about, you guys can apply to white bass. You guys can also apply a lot of these to walleyes too, but fishing every day and putting in the time has really allowed me to dial my system into three specific techniques that I'm gonna show you guys about today. So first and foremost, let's talk about my all-time favorite way to catch these fish and if you guys have followed my channel for a while you already know my favorite technique is the Rapala jigging wrap. Now I've probably got five to ten different videos on how to fish this bait not only for wipers but for walleyes too but I really really do prefer a super aggressive jigging presentation when it comes to this bait. The reason that I really really like this bait is for a couple different reasons but it's a big bait, it's a heavy bait, so I can drop that bait right down to the fish as soon as I see them, which is key, especially for wipers that are pelagic and they're known to move all over the place at any given time. It's a relatively easy bait for me to give my clients to throw on board because a lot of that presentation is just strictly vertical. There are gonna be some times where we, we find the fish, we find a pot of fish, and then I'll set up 20 or 30 feet away from them, pitch it out to them and bring it back to the boat, especially when those fish are more active and they wanna move. But for the most part, it's really just finding those pods of fish, setting up right over the top of them and getting a bait down to them as soon as possible. I prefer the number seven size jigging wrap, which is two and three quarter inches long and five eighths of an ounce. They make a bigger size, the number nine, which I think is just over three inches long and it's a little bit closer to an ounce. I think it's a little bit closer to three quarters of an ounce. But as far as the gear that we're fishing it on, I find the number nine size just a little bit too heavy for a spinning rod and it is even just a little bit too big for those fish but they don't mind this is a good middle of the road size the smaller size down from this the number five is like more ice fishing related way too small the way that those wipers eat this bait it will just be totally engulfed down their gullet into their gills bleeding all over the place that already happens with this you don't want that but like i keep saying if you guys have watched my channel before you've seen that i've kind of become a connoisseur of sorts of the jigging wrap for wipers and it's just a really really fun bait to fish a couple things though with this bait you got to be really really careful number one it's super super snaggy so if you're fishing any sort of area with brush rocks any sort of timber so on and so forth it's probably gonna end up there really quick. That being said, this bait does have three hooks on it. On a lot of my jigging wraps, I do prefer to cut the front hook. There's a lot of times that you're never gonna hook a fish with that front hook. It's mostly gonna be the back or the treble and the way they eat it, I don't think it's really gonna matter, but it is gonna become a little bit less snaggless with that front hook. So even though it sucks spending eight or nine bucks on this bait, 
just cut that front hook off. So now we've talked about the bait, let's talk about the gear that we throw jigging wraps on. So as many of you guys know, I'm a big spinning rod fan for just about every presentation that I'm able to get away with. Jigging wraps especially, you're probably never gonna see anybody throw a jigging wrap on a bait caster and that's for a couple different reasons. Especially when it comes to wipers because you need a really, really smooth, good drag system and a spinning reel allows you to do that. So for my specific spinning rod setup, this is a Fox River. This is a 7.3 medium light spinning rod. You can use a seven foot medium. You've got a very quick tip, you know, to make those quick jigging pops with the jigging wrap. But oftentimes I find that seven foot medium action to just be a little bit too stiff for a wiper. If you guys have ever caught a wiper before, you obviously know that they pull super, super hard. Their head shakes are really, really big, especially with the really big ones. So with the 7.3 medium light, I've number one, got a long rod for leverage to absorb those head shakes. And number two, I've got that medium light action to do the exact same thing. So you want a more parabolic rod and when I say parabolic we're talking about the rod bend so on a medium light rod it's hard to get this entirely into the frame but that rod is parabolic almost all the way down to that second to last guide on the rod so again when you're fighting those fish it takes more time for that rod to unload when they're shaking their head or making those long runs and it allows you to keep those that bait pinned in the fish's mouth especially with all those hooks in it if you had a shorter and stiffer rod the rod would unload a lot quicker and those head shakes would allow that fish to shake that bait and those treble hooks out really, really fast. So for that reason, I really, really like a medium light spinning rod. Now going along those same lines, I prefer braid. This is 10 pound braid. I probably up this one to 15 by wiper season, but with the braid and a medium light spinning rod, you don't have to work that bait as much. Now, if anybody's watched a lot of videos, especially with in fishermen and the lenders introducing the jigging wrap to open water fishing, they talk a lot about using monofilament. Now I always joke and I say that monofilament are for guys that still use a rotary phone in their house and monofilament will always have a time and place but with braid on a medium light spinning rod you don't have to work that bait quite as hard because you've got a lot softer tip so if you had mono on a medium light spinning rod you would really have to work that bait to get the action out of it but with the braid and it's no stretch properties you're able to work that bait a lot less and get the same amount of action so essentially you're just saving your jigging arm for the day Plus, let's be real, fighting a wiper on no stretch line on a medium light spinning rod is probably the most fun that you can have in Kansas on a lake. Now, let's talk about the reel. The reel is huge when it comes to wiper fishing because again, like I said, you need a bigger reel with a bigger spool to take more line, make longer casts, and let those fish take drag. So for my spinning reel setups on all my rods and all my client rods, I've got either at the PC Fun Carbon X 2 or 3000 size. On any rods that were casting the baits, I prefer a 3000 size because you've got the bigger spool, the wider spool, which allows you to make longer casts. And for the vertical jigging rods, I've just got a 2000. Now with the Carbon X, the body size between the 2000 and 3000 size is the same. You're just getting a bigger spool so you can fit more line on it. Now that being said, you're never gonna get spooled by a wiper with 75 to 100 yards of line on it. So I wouldn't be concerned about that. You can't go wrong with either one, the 2000 or 3000 size. They're both super, super light, just under seven ounces for the 2000 and just over seven ounces for the 3000. 11 ball bearing, so you've got your super, super smooth drag. And the thing just looks dang good, especially with white power pro on it. But again, doesn't matter what spinning reel you use, as long as it's got a smooth drag and you've got a relatively light setup because you're gonna be jigging all day long. Now, one more thing to note with using braid on your spinning rod, I do tie a 12 to 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. The main reason for that is two things. It's not because the fish can see your line, but the biggest key, number one, in the areas that we fish, sometimes we fish around a lot of timber, fluorocarbon is far more abrasion resistant than braid so you don't have to worry about breaking off as easily if you're moving that bait over trees or rocks or what have you which in our lakes have a lot of zebra mussels on them you're not going to lose your bait or break a fish off number two is that when you're jigging that bait especially when you're making a long cast sometimes when you go straight braid your braid will have a tendency to wrap up in the treble hook using a thicker fluorocarbon leader is going to prevent that from happening now we'll talk more about that when we get into the spoons portion of this talk here but i guess there is actually three reasons and the 
third reason is because that floor carbon does give you just a little bit of extra stretch. And with wipers, when they pull, you've obviously got your parabolic action, the medium light rod to absorb a lot of that impact, but having floor carbon on there doesn't hurt at all. So learn how to tie your double uni knot and start tying a floor carbon leader or even a monofilament leader if you want to when you're learning how to fish a jigging wrap. So now that we've got the jigging wrap out of the way, let's kind of lump the second one into the first one. And we'll talk about my next favorite, which is in that same vertical jigging category, which is using a spoon. So fishing a spoon, this is probably one of the more widely talked about techniques for wipers, stripers, white bass, so on and so forth. It may seem really easy, but there's actually a lot of little nuances that I'm gonna talk to you guys about about fishing a spoon. So let's talk about the spoons that I use. As most of you guys know or follow my pages, you guys have seen that I've been sponsored by Binks Pro Series Spoons here for about four or five years now. They make all different sizes and types of spoons all the way down to pan fish, all the way up to one, one and a half ounce spoons for whatever applications you need. Now, when I first started fishing for wipers and got into the spoon bite, that's what I had them dialed in on. This was long before I started fishing a jigging wrap. So I can say I've probably been fishing a spoon for wipers longer than I have a jigging wrap. And in that time, I've been able to dial in a couple different presentations and ways to rig my spoons to make me a little bit more successful on the water. So first let's talk about the spoon. This is a half ounce Binks Pro Series spoon. This is one of the oldest colors I think that they make with that white and red throat. I really, really like that color. I don't think you can really pick a bad color when they're eating good, but that's just one that's more natural that I've had a lot of success on. And honestly, I don't think it matters what size spoon you fish. I've caught big giant wipers on the little quarter ounce spoon, the panfish spoons that they make all the way up to the one ounce. The length doesn't get too much bigger. It's all about the same size, but as a good middle of the road size, I do like that half ounce. They just recently in the last year or two came out with a three ace ounce spoon size. That's another good one if you're fishing shallower water, but Again, that half ounce seems to be the ticket for whatever depth you might be fishing. So Bink spoons normally come with a barrel swivel attached to the line tie right there, as well as a split ring. Now what I like to do is take that barrel swivel off as well as the split ring and tie it direct to a fluorocarbon leader. Now this is a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. Going back to the jigging wrap presentation, that 20 pound fluorocarbon leader is not for stretch, it's not because the fish can see the line, but when you're ripping that spoon up and down, it's gonna prevent it from getting fouled up in the treble hook. If you guys watch any Kansas fishing YouTube videos, I'm sure you've seen Team Main Lake, Craig Berlick. He's actually the one that introduced me to this presentation and how to tie this. I think that it's a lot better than tying it with the barrel swivel and split ring on there. So let's talk about the rod. Now you can throw a spoon on kind of the same setup, spinning rod setup that I was talking about before. Sometimes it's better to have a little bit stiffer rod but for spooning this is actually going to go against everything that i talked about with using a spinning rod with the jigging wrap now this rod right here i know it looks kind of goofy but this is one of the bink spooning series rods specifically made for ripping a jigging spoon this is a five foot seven i forget the action if it's pretty heavy though i don't i wouldn't even call it a medium heavy i think it's more of a heavy but it's got the old school pistol grip handle on there and this is obviously a bait casting model now i have both models i have a spinning rod model that's the exact same size and specs just obviously made for a spinning rod but I prefer this bait casting model when I'm ripping with one hand I've got my other hand ready to go and it's just a little bit more comfortable on your wrist but that pistol grip really allows you to get a good grip on it it does feel kind of awkward at first and I'll tell you what's even more awkward is fighting a seven to nine pound wiper on a five foot seven heavy action rod but just play your drag but that shorter stouter rod will allow you to make way better pops vertically as opposed to a longer rod when you're right below the boat if anybody knows anything about jigging walleye especially a lot of guys like a shorter rod you know like a six foot six foot three six foot six but this five foot seven all the way to the 6'6 model that they make is a good middle of the road. Now on my bait casting reel, I've got 15 pound braid. You can use all the way up to 20 or 30. I'm just a little bit more sporting. I like the light stuff. You're never gonna break it off, obviously. But then just remember, I've got that spoon direct tied to the line tie. I've taken off the barrel swivel as well as the split ring tied direct to it. And then I've got a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader tied to that same barrel swivel that came on the spoon. You don't need a very long lead, just about you know one and a half to two feet. You obviously don't wanna reel that through your guides, but again, that's gonna help you with having that line getting caught up in the treble hook as you're sitting there ripping on it. So that kind of concludes our jigging portion of the talk here. Let's move on to more of the power fishing side of it. All right, so my second favorite technique to throw for wipers is definitely a small swim bait. Now I've got several videos on my channel again throwing this bait. This is again kind of like where I'll set up off of those fish, go find the pod, and then set up 30 or 40 feet away from them, 
cast to them and then bring it back to the boat. Now for the most part, as far as size on these paddle tail swim baits, I like a three and a quarter, three and a half, all the way up to five inch swim bait. You're not necessarily gonna weed out the bigger fish in the school by using a big swim bait. I promise you, you can catch a 14 inch white bass on a five or six inch swim bait. But this one, this specific one right here is custom poured. I get a lot of these baits custom poured because that plastic is really tough. It's not like throwing a swim bait for a smallmouth in clear water or cold water where those fish are a lot more finicky. They need something like a Kai Tech that's a lot more brittle and has a lot more action. The wipers don't care. When they want to eat, they're going to eat no matter what that paddle tail looks like in the water. But you're going to have a lot more durability too, especially when you go through an afternoon of catching 20 or 30 of those fish. You're probably only going to need to use one bait. But this one right here is three and a half inches. I really like that one. Now, as far as the jig head that's on it, this is a half ounce Strike King Squadron head jig. I really, really like this swim bait head. Number one, because of the profile, matches the profile of the bait really dead on, dead center, keeps that motion real natural. But I also like the hook. There's a couple different jig heads that I fish. I really like the six cents swim bait jig head, but sometimes I find that those hooks are just a little bit too long for a three and a half inch bait. This half ounce and even the three quarter ounce version has the same size hook, but they're really, really stout. With how strong those fish are, you need a really, really strong hook, especially when you're dragging those baits through deep rocks or deep trees, up a river channel, what have you. Really, really need a good stout hook and that Strike King Squadron head is where it's at. So as far as the gear that we're throwing this bait on, again, this is a half ounce head, so you're gonna want something a little bit heavier. Now, say you want to downsize, say you're fishing those fish in a lot shallower water, I like a 3 8 ounce ball head jig. This is the 3 8 ounce Bass Pro Shops ball head jig. This is one that I use a lot for smallmouth bass too. A lot smaller, still pretty good stout hook, but definitely a lot smaller. You probably want to throw that on a spinning rod, but for these bigger ones, I like throwing that on a casting rod. So for my casting rod, setup i've got a seven foot three medium heavy fox river rod you can get away with using a seven footer that's the size that i used for a really really long time until fox river came out with the seven foot three but that seven foot three and the medium heavy action is going to allow you to make fire off a really long cast and also still have that long rod leverage to fight the fish but with any bait over a half ounce like that or right around a half ounce you're probably going to want to throw that on a casting rod so as far as my reel this is a pc fun phantom x casting reel this is the six three to one gear ratio model. I like the 6.3 to 1 just because it really allows me to control my speed a lot better. When I'm throwing a big swim bait on a big jig head like that, normally that's when those fish are positioned right on the bottom and I need that bait to keep constant bottom contact. Now if I was throwing this on a 7.6 to 1 gear ratio, that would mean that I'm picking up line a lot quicker obviously and it wouldn't allow me to keep that bait on the bottom as good. But with the 6.3 to 1, I can speed it up if I need to and then kill it, slow roll it and still keep it right along the bottom. So as far as line on this casting rod you guys can use braid if you want to but I really like a 14 or 15 pound fluorocarbon line just because again fluorocarbon is more abrasion resistant than braids so when you're dragging that on the bottom through rocks or trees or whatever you're not going to get nicks as much in your line but fluorocarbon versus braid and mono is that fluorocarbon sinks and it stays down there so it is going to keep my bait down a lot better but you've got a little bit more stretch too when you're fighting that fish that being said the medium heavy is a good stiff rod to set the hook but with the fluorocarbon you've really got to drive that hook home and in my videos in the past you guys have seen I really lay the wood to those fish when I set the hook drive that big stout hook right into their face and make sure that it, they don't get off so now that we've got both of those tactics out of the way let's get on to my third favorite technique to target wipers down deep now this next technique is not something that you guys have seen me do quite a bit on this channel if we go way back like six or seven years ago you're gonna see some videos of me catching wipers doing this but my third favorite technique when I'm targeting those fish really deep is trolling with lead core. Now it's not my favorite thing to do just because I really obviously like fighting those fish right from the get-go, set the hook, reel them in, so on and so forth. But when those fish set up really, really deep, especially in the summertime where you've got a thermocline and they're sitting below the thermocline, sometimes in 40, 50 feet of water, that's when I really pull out the lead core rods. Now, not this past summer, but the summer before, we actually boated our biggest wiper of the year, just under 12 pounds using that lead core technique. I'll throw a screenshot in here of that same day where we were fishing those fish sitting right below the thermocline in somewhere between 30 and 40 feet of water. But that was sometime in June, that thermocline 
line was real deep and that's where those fish are going to be in the most oxygenated portion of the water column. So lead core is definitely a little bit more of a dialed technique, something that I'm even still getting the hang of when it comes to trolling for walleyes, especially up shallow and then wipers. But with lead core line, you need to have real specific gear for lead core. So this rod right here is actually one of the Jason Mitchell series rods. It's a six foot medium heavy specifically designed for lead core. The six foot rod allows me to put my lead core rod straight out of the back of the boat. And when I'm trolling, I've got two other rods off the side of the boat for flatline trolling with 30 pound braid anywhere from seven feet to 12 feet out, depending on my rod. But again, this rod is specifically designed for pulling crankbaits with 18 pound Dacron lead core down in the depths. So pretty much with lead core, you've got 10 colors per spool. Every color equals 30 feet of line. And for every 30 feet of line means that your line is gonna sink five feet down. So that being said, this is why I prefer this technique when I'm trolling down deep, because it allows me to get those baits down in the water column without letting two or 300 feet of braid out. So for example, if I have four Four colors of lead core out that means my bait is down 20 feet just by the sink ratio in itself then you've got to factor in the depth curve of the crankbait and so on and so forth that's why I say it's a real dialed technique but that's why I recommend using a line counter too I pretty much always exclusively when I'm trolling use a line counter reel this is a Cabela's depth master it's a 30 size for the waters that I fish I never put a full spool of lead core on my reel just because I'm never going to use all of it I usually split it in half but with that it's a whole nother video you've got to calibrate your line counter put backing before the lead core on there. It's just, it's a whole thing. That's a whole nother video. But the deal with these lead core rods is that they're basically just fiberglass. It's a real parabolic rod. So when you're pulling that heavy, heavy lead core down deep, pulling crankbaits and that fish hits, it can really absorb the shock. And that's the biggest thing with trolling in general. All of your trolling presentations are with crankbaits for the most part that have treble hooks when the fish hits. You want your drag set correctly, as well as having the right rod to absorb that impact when they hit. But even though you're not setting the hook and trolling is trolling, some guys really don't like it. And they'll actually specifically book a trip and tell me that they don't want to troll. But again, there's a time and a place for everything. It's really fun having those rods out, seeing the rod bend over the drag, screaming, having your clicker on so on and so forth. So that's your trolling technique for you. But as far as baits go when you're trolling, I mean, some days you can pick a crankbait, any crankbait, as long as it gets down there and in front of their face, sometimes it doesn't matter. But I prefer a number six or a number seven size shad style bait like that. I have a lot of my crankbaits custom painted because in the summertime, there's guys out there trolling for walleyes, there's guys out there trolling for wipers. They see so many different baits. They probably always see a regular fire tire flicker shad that some, you know, Jim bought at Walmart and wanted to go out and troll with a spinning rod. So I like to have a lot of my baits custom painted, just show them something different. But again, that number six or number seven size is gonna be the deal for the waters that we fish because in the summertime, a lot of those shad that they're eating are about that same size, so match the hatch. But I can't tell you one color that they're gonna bite on, better than the others. That's pink panties. That's another color right there that I really like. That purple mixed with the pink, white, and chartreuse. An up north classic right there. Wonder Bread got the red front hook on it. Some guys swear by that. And sometimes too, if they're in a negative mood or they've seen a lot of baits, I'll downsize. That's a Salmo Hornet right there. I really like that. That's one of my bread and butter walleye colors for trolling in the summer too. But it doesn't matter. That's why I like having a trolling spread. We've got four rods out for the most part, way more manageable. Put two big baits out the side, put two small baits right out the back on your lead cord. Just let the fish tell you what they want. But that's one of five or six crankbait boxes that I have. So I can't really tell you what size or color is the best, but that number six or number seven flicker shad or shad wrap or shad profile bait is probably gonna be your best bet. But that pretty much covers my top three favorite techniques for wipers. Doesn't matter what time of the year. The trolling stuff I do prefer during the summertime when the water's warm, their metabolism's higher, they wanna move a little bit more. And then the jigging wrap and the spoon and the swim bait technique are pretty much effective in any water over 50 or 55 degrees. But again, you guys can go watch my previous video videos on my channel from last year all the way back to five years ago on wipers and the different presentations that I use in action. A lot of jigging, casting, bringing it back to the boat, finding a school, setting up off of them, casting a swim bait right past them and bringing it right back through them. Again, there's a myriad of ways that you guys can catch them, but over the years here, especially guiding on my home waters here in Northeast Kansas, I was able to dial in a couple different presentations that I consider myself pretty good at and I know will be a sure bet on the water with customers. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. I'd much prefer to be on the water, but again, unfortunately, we're pretty limited by the big Kansas winds today. It's almost 70 degrees in the middle of January almost, but 
We're gonna have a big front rolling through this weekend. We're gonna get a lot of snow and a lot of ice, so that is gonna suck big time. But that's why I wanna put some of these videos out, some tips, tricks, tutorials on what I do, how I do it, so on and so forth. So if you guys wanna see something specific, just let me know in the comments. I'll do polls on the community tab every now and again, just kind of gauge where you guys are at, but this one, the wiper techniques were definitely a pretty big win. Again, if you guys are in the Kansas City area on Saturday, January 18th, I will be at the Olathe Bass Pro Shops for Guides and Outfitters Day. I'll have a whole big booth, TV screen, slideshow, be booking trips, talk fishing, might do a seminar, but I am offering 10% off all guide trips booked at that event in store only. So if you guys wanna book a trip with a little discount, make sure you come through and say hi, but I'd love to see all you guys. So in the meantime, that's all I've got for today. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next video.